Oh, I don't get to see the chat? Oh, sorry, y'all. I don't get to see the chat. I don't get to see who's all up in here. But what's up? It's the pre-show. Do we have the pre-show graphic? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Filling in for, uh, you know, Craig X, who you'll see momentarily when the show starts at 419. But in the meantime, I'm here, sitting in the big chair. Feels good, feels good. I really wish I could see what's going on in the chat right now. That would be so dope. I could be like, ah, oh, shout out to you, you. But shout out to everybody in the chat, even though I can't see you guys right now. I still have much love for you. Um, yeah, you know. It's going to be a really dope show. Man, if you live in Vancouver, 604... How bad is this weather we're having right now? My goodness. We are here. What's that? Oh, yeah, I could, but nah. I just I just do it like this. But yeah, it's like it's raining, as I guess the phrase is it's raining cats and dogs out there. And while we're here enduring this uh weather, Craig is just at the Emerald Cup in the sun. Should have taken me with him. Just recently got my passport, you know, I'm, I'm travel ready. I would have liked a little uh, break from all this rain, you know what I mean? But it's all good, it's all good. It's always next year, it's always next year. And uh, make sure you check out my new project, G-Town Lover, yo. It's out everywhere. And my other project, too, Low-Key Mary Jane 2. Most of y'all probably like Low-Key Mary Jane 2 better because it's all about weed. That's six songs, all about weed. Um, that's really dope. I actually shot a music video for one of these songs yesterday um, it was really dope the, the weather was shitty obviously but we made it happen you know we made it happen shout out to Aaron AS visuals so yeah stay tuned for that the music video is coming soon but yeah go check out the album and yeah let me know what you think you know what I mean it's dope though it's dope man I hope it doesn't rain tomorrow what's the weather looking like rain next three days rain <sighs> but hey, at least it's better than snow. I'll tell you that much. It's better than snow. How are we looking for time? Audio low. What'd you say? Yeah, it's gonna come in just a second, although I think there's a little bit of a delay, so we'll find out how this works. Okay. I'm gonna be able to hear him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wanna interrupt him for a second. What's up? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Just for a second. Is it delayed? <laughs> Am I on now? <laughs> Can I go? Can I? Hey, hey, Puffa, you look good at my desk, bro, but uh, make sure you don't uh, turn the temperature up too high on my sub, yo, like just how I like it when I get back. And uh, I've seen you adjust in the height of my chair. And make sure, make sure you don't eat all those weeds, mint cookies behind you, but at least have some, man. <laughs> Grab a pack of brownies or some shit back there. Grab some products by sec, man. Roll up a joint there. You're sitting at my desk. You should be smoking weed, bro. Come on now. Well. In that case... That's it, Andrew. What's the other part of the buster? Which one is that for now? <laughs> what about the other part of the buster? Oh. The... the yeah, grind. Oh, whatever. I'll just use one of these, I guess. The buster, the grinder. The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the producer and do not necessarily reflect those of Cannabis Life Network, Pot TV, or Cannabis Culture.
Yes, sir. Hey, what's up? It's me, Craig X, and I'm here in California. Puffy, you look good in my seat. This week at Studio 710, it's 420. Light them if you got them. Vancouver, Cali, it don't matter. Should be joining us for ours. We got a big special down here. Episode 156 of Expert Joints Live here. I'm down here in Santa Rosa, California at the Sonoma County Fairgrounds getting ready for the 15th annual uh, Emerald Cup. My third time down here. Very, very cool. Looking forward to the show. Going to do a montage with C ahead of us looking forward to it man my space but uh before we get to that and this week's show of course uh since i last saw you i did episode 23 22 23 22 i believe it was a friday is over there on save on radio my boy dj slippy had a good show over there i uh, appreciate everybody who toked up and tuned in check out the replay over there on expertjoints.com and of course the big announcement came out that i've been hinting at for a while mm-hmm on Tuesday, we made the announcement, Craig X and the whole expert joints, everything we do is now also going to be seen on High Times TV. That's right. If you check out tv.hightimes.com, you'll find all the expert joints stuff on there. Expert Joints Live, Chronic Cooking, and also Expert Joints Presents, uh, upcoming Out and About, and the Fridays videos as well, too. So that's very, very cool. Looking forward to that. Of course, the live stream stays on Expert Joints, Pot TV, Cannabis Culture, and uh, all the rest. Of course, Cannabis Life Network, who I'm here with this weekend, shooting. But now the replays you'll see on High Times TV as well, too. So that's very, very cool. Check out the app. Check out more to come from me and all that as well, too. But that all happened. What's happening now is set up. So this is Thursday, the Emerald Cup giant event down here. Basically, it's almost like 420 at the PE for those in Vancouver with a racial relationship, except without the, without the merry-go-rounds. But this is an unbelievable event here. Uh, hundreds of vendors, been doing it for a decade and a half, and... I can tell you about it all day because I've been here three times. It's a great time. You can watch the replays. But somebody who can tell you much more about it is the founder, the creator, the executive producer, the man, the myth, the legend, Tim Blake. What's going on, Dan? Good to see you. You too, man. How are you? Yep. So, of course, we're the founder, the godfather of the Emerald Cup. First of all, thanks for having me. Pleasure. And for those who don't didn't just start here, this isn't just my favorite two-day event by accident. This has been around for 15 years now? This will be our 15th year. Started in 2003 back in my little place, Area 101. I was going to say, people. didn't this like start at the family farm, just as kind of a smaller event or something to that effect? Oh, yeah. It was a couple hundred people. Everybody thought we'd get busted. Uh, you know, it's it amazing to think that we, uh, we've grown to this point. To the point where, of course, this event now, the Emerald Cup, is a huge event. I mean, 420 as a draw, number of bodies and, and booths and stuff, a big event as well, too. You hear about Spanish this and Hemp Fest and all these other events around the world, but I don't see anything that does it like you guys over here. 300 to 400 different vendors and exhibitors, speakers, be it, be it flower and concentrates and information and, and all outside of the fairgrounds contest no vendors no sponsors uh just a party and uh over the years it just slowly added on with uh, the contest and then we brought speakers in we brought vendors sponsors and it, it really is truly it's an amazing event even in my my and your, and your event, of course, now I host a lot of events back up in Canada, of course. We've done handed out a bunch of trophies, all sorts of different cups over there. There's a lot of cups out there in the world, no matter where you go. But yours focuses solely on outdoor, sun-grown, and if I'm right, even organic or, yeah? yeah absolutely. We started, just flowers. Uh, well, not, well, or, all this organic. Everything's okay. organic. Even we even spend quite a bit of money just buying off the uh, fairgrounds so they don't sell Twinkies and hot dogs here. <laughs> and they could sell Twinkies and hot dogs if they were organic. But, mm -hmm. uh, it's not that I'm against the meat. Um, yeah, no, for but, sure. Uh, but the cup's been organic since we started. That's one of the things I'm proudest uh, about. People thought I was crazy back then because people were all smoking indoor. Yeah. It was illegal, so right. people were like, why are you doing this? And then to be organic on top of that, it was kind of like, and he, he's way out there. But now, 15 years later, it's kind of vindicated that it was the right thing to do. And, and if I remember, in the last couple of years, it's been between like 900 and 1,200 entries. Is that like, 
I've done 150, 130 entries in a few days trying to judge them and shit. Is, am I wrong on that? 900 plus entries in a cup? We had more than that. Uh, this year we had slightly over 500, which we're really happy to have because of the difficulties with regulation and all, yeah. the, all the issues and stuff. But normally we're up close to a thousand and uh, it is an amazing job that our judges uh, do and how much time and effort they put into it. It's not a one day judging, they go for six weeks. So I was just going to say, I've seen a couple of people that I know from Instagrams and obviously following you know, all your accounts as well too, but you can follow the Emerald Cup all over the social medias as well too, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. of course the EmeraldCup.com is the website as well yeah. too, but I've seen it and I've seen the judging happening for like a month. Like I was kicking around the idea with, with Taylor, your, your fine daughter who helps put on this fabulous show uh, with tons of help and volunteers and, and highly paid employees and all the <laughs> weeks and months and years of fucking labor but but yeah. um but when it comes down to it we talked about the idea of maybe coming down to help judge or check it out or film some of that and it's such an ordeal we we, we need to come down here for a month just to do something like that i mean it's crazy you know we've had a lot of celebrity judges people that want to come in and judge with us and when we tell them the the requirements and the responsibilities most of them can't even think about it because you end up coming up to our place at least two or three times, getting together for a full day with the judges, then going home, spending the better part of a month, you know, judging every day. You almost need a helper or a caregiver by the end because somebody's got to help, you know, feed you and take care of you because you're getting high all day long. And it, it's just something, but. Uh, but that's why we don't get a lot of people like you or celebrity judges because they realize how much work it is. Hey, I would do it. I mean, I can go through 50 entries in a day. I mean, I'm an experienced judge. But it, yeah, it is the point that to come down from Vancouver, I got to bring Parker down. I got to get the Airbnb. Like, you got to clear the schedule. It's a shit ton of work. So shouts, obviously, all the judges and shit. But all the people who submit all the entries. And of course, I mean, if it wasn't for them continuing to soldier on, I got to say, I'm not wearing a 215 bracelet this year. So yeah. for those who don't know, you had to be Prop 215, which is the compliance to be medically cleared for cannabis in California up until January. And now you guys are recreational? Yeah, we're legal. So you don't need wristbands. You can come in 21 and over, of course. Uh, and it's a whole new world. But the show has definitely been based upon the contestants, the cultivators, the people that have been farming up in these hills all these years of, of the Emerald Triangle and all over California. It hits the name uh, of the, of the, the event, contest. The but of course, now it's uh, it's also all the farmland, too, all the bottomland, too. So it's basically all land in California. But uh, but it's all these cultivators that put all the time and effort to do something really fine, to produce fine flowers. And it all starts with the flowers. No matter what product you've got, it's going to start with the flowers. So. And, that, and that's that's universal. It doesn't matter where you go. We don't have quite the strong um, outdoor game that you guys probably have down here. There's some great outdoor growers and stuff, but our our season isn't quite the same. We don't have quite the yeah. heat to do it up there. You know, we like got them. some really good indoor growers, but but a lot of these you know uh, extract makers and topical makers and edible makers and, and they all get recognized at, at certain cups more than others. Do, do you guys include any of that in in the event as well too, or, or plans in the future? Or? Yeah, we're going to. We're going to expand it out. Uh, you know, we've talked about that a lot. You know, like with, we brought the hydrocarbon in this year mm -hmm. when it was illegal and they were using, you know, small cans and blowing themselves up in the garages. We couldn't yeah. do that. But yeah. now that it's like it's a legal part of the, uh, the landscape and they're doing it in labs and it's pharmaceutical grade, we brought that in this year. We're going to have to start bringing the indoor in because there are people who are doing it right and, and uh, doing it organically and doing it the right way. And when, as we go across the country with the show, there's a lot of places that can't do a lot of it's true. a lot of long season outdoors. Yeah. So we're going to have to open ourselves up to the different forms. In fact, we've talked about different symbols and how to really, you know, uh, identify that and how we do it. But uh, no, we want to include everybody. It's got to be inclusive. You had to be a little bit of a challenge though this year. I mean, up here in Canada, we've got legalization, which isn't really legal yeah, that much at all. No, I it's, know. it's if you buy a very small, little, tightly controlled bit of not very good limited products, then that's fine within very certain conditions varying from province to province. However, all the rest of the stuff is more illegal than ever. And that to me isn't really legalization. Now you guys have had legalization and you said you have less entries this year. They had, I'm assuming there's been some, not only some, some changes to some of the entrants and, and vendors, but some of the, the logistics or the paperwork associated were a little bit different this year. Yeah, they were supposed to make it easy on us. They, this is a mature industry. California is not like anywhere else. We had a billion dollar plus industry already in the cannabis world. They didn't. It doesn't matter whether you're a, a distributor, whether you're a retailer, whether you're a manufacturer, whether you're an event. They just didn't 
get it together right. They were too restrictive, the amount of regulations. They've only uh, permitted, I think, 300 farms in Mendocino and about 300 something in, in Humboldt out of like 10,000 farms. I was just going to say, that's not even yeah. 1%. Yeah, so it's like they haven't got the permits in, so you can't have people selling legal cannabis. Uh, the retailers have really been slowed down. It's really, they've done their best to actually kill off as much of the industry as possible. Um, I mean, I don't think they would Sounds be like malicious. Yeah, yeah, that's what they've done. And then the, then the rich people are going to come in and kind of pick up the pieces and move on. The people and, who don't smoke weed, who <laughs> but wear suits, but who, who grow it and sell it and, and are worth billions of dollars on the stock market. You have them too. You know what? Yeah. It's not who you, who you were, it's who you are. So whether it's Altura, whether it's the Coca-Cola, whoever it is, we have to be in Sure. But on the backs and the hearts and the souls of all the people that did this, that worked so hard to put it all together, they really made it very challenging for them to move on. And so yeah. we were talking about it earlier. It's like there's a mourning going on on one side of the demise of so many people's. On the other side, there's this like universal big bang explosion of a whole new world that we're building. And so side and it's it's a sad landscape that was me on october 17th it was very cool to be covering legalization day yeah. on the on the capital of bc with cannabis life network and high times and all that and, and yeah but also i see all these people out there and all these companies who've, who've been big supporters of my show and, and and i love their products and they're just good folks out there and frankly they're fucked yeah they are and it's hard to tell them that, you know, it's hard to read, you know, you have to try to be realistic. I have a lot of friends and family and ask me because I voted for 64, Prop 64, which is right. legalization, because we had to keep people from going to jail anymore. They say, look what, look what you and everybody did. One way, you know, in California here, they talked about a five-year rollout, no large-scale agriculture. They were going to let the help, some, help the small product makers. So what they did, agriculture, they know? made it so small product makers couldn't to even go to manufacturing but, uh, we started we started with too big and too top heavy and now they're trying to let the small guys in but not big enough where the small guys can actually kind of really make it to where they need to and they're delaying edibles and topicals and concentrates mm -hmm. and all this sort of stuff which is unfortunate but they, they say it's coming but it's, it's not coming soon enough you get you get the little old lady who used to put the weed cream on the wrist there and the wrist doesn't hurt yeah. now and now she got to go back to taking the pills or take or being in pain again I mean that's not fair and what, what yeah. is that harming anybody, really, right? Yeah, although, you know what? I do think that in the next couple of years, it'll all turn around. It I think it was. Time. I think it took them uh, by surprise, the whole world. Yep. Look what's happening in Canada. 100%. Look what's going on in Israel. Look what's going on in Colombia, Mexico. I mean, the whole world is just very quickly claiming cannabis in whichever way they can. And so now there's nothing. That's why I really believe that within the next couple of years. Cause yeah, I see that coming too. Otherwise, they're going to watch their you know, brothers and sisters north in Canada. You guys are going to get it all, which you, you deserve. You, you jumped. Yeah. Can't overlook the significance of events like this and people like you. I mean, good, bad, or otherwise, with the advancement of cannabis, I would rather in the long term see us get through the bull years ago if we never would have ran through all this crap. Yeah. But at least you've been doing it for 15 years be you know i've heard maybe a little bit of some cloudy skies here and there this weekend it's not like we're not used to rain at events here rain or shine down at the beach we'll yeah. still be there for 420 in a few months i can tell you that much there'll be what 25 30 thousand people here per day or something for the weekend or there'll be over 30 thousand for the weekend uh it'll be nice on saturday maybe some rain on sunday people you know ask me why after all these years i still do a show in the middle of december outside it's, it's crazy on one side but it's the f celebration of the fall harvest and this is when we do it so we're hardcore uh but the Together, right. so you have this massive amount of tension it's all connected with dry, you know, flooring, and uh, most of the stuff's indoors. And so it's going to be a good weekend. So we bit your flooring, honestly, oh, last year. Yeah. Uh, after I saw it, when we came down in 2016, <laughs> you can watch the replays. It was cool. It was dope. You guys had it here. It was nice. Then when we came down in 2017, and then you had the flooring down in those back, like the sort of kind of barny kind of areas or whatever, and in the tents and shit. And I was like, I went, I took pictures and video, and I'm like, yo, Jer. Jeremiah Vandermeer from Cannabis Culture, the lead organizer of the 420 rally. We take over the whole side of the beach. Yeah. Like 100,000 people come out there. And the year, one year was really sunny, it was no problem. The next year it was rainy, it kind of got a little muddy, kind of mm -hmm. a little trampled. Not that, I mean, yeah. it didn't grow back. So the last year, all the flooring we could, we bought all the flooring that was within like 500 miles, sent out like 30 some thousand dollars with just in like flooring for the main part of it, whatever. Yeah. Uh, all inspired by the great stuff you guys got laid down over there. I'll tell you when they talked about doing this flooring, and of course I was into it, but I, I, I didn't, they were talking about 
what kind of flooring do you get for a quarter of a million dollars? Badass and floor. I came out and looked at it, and it's it's a badass floor. Right. People got we got more compliments and people giving us props for that flooring than anything we've. People got, that shoes. flooring, dude, that was amazing. And of course, the handicapped people could get in and go anywhere. Right. So for like over 200 handicapped people, they said yeah. it was like the experience of their life because right. they'd. Very and all the vendors who got to be in there. Well, we're gonna actually have. A minute. Oh, yeah. We've got that. Uh, people be coming through here the weekend. The EmeraldCup.com is there. Heidi Quinn locally. Uh, go to the EmeraldCup.com and you can get information. Come down and join us. It's going to be a great weekend. Willie Nelson is coming down. We got oh, uh, James and you know, Jason and Bob. Uh, you know what? I, I, we'll, we'll try. You, you know the guy? Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, yeah. uh, no, that would be great. I appreciate you having me down here. And, of course, the hospitality for letting us come by in Vegas and use yeah. the house there as well, too. Oh. Sorry we missed you on the show there, but it's okay. I'm glad you're having fine. down here. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, to that effect, um, Andrew, can you hear me? I don't know. There's a little bit of a delay here. I think he's there somewhere. Andrew, do you happen to have grow tips queued up at all or favorite four? Can you put – you know a thing or two about growing weed. A little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Okay, so I have this segment on my show where I call Grow Tips, and I get like growers from around the world to offer up a few like little tips. Being the fact that you've got a festival all about outdoor, sun-grown, beautiful organic cannabis, you think if I play the little video segment, you could offer up... Run it. Hold on. Run it. Hold on. Yeah, go on. What's like up, everybody? Seconds. I'm back. Yo. Yo. Pass me the Hey, hold it. Pass me the lighter. This time I was prepared. Have a few doobies rolled up here. Now, do the joints I smoke count towards the joint counter? Because if so, then run it up. Now, we're experiencing some technical difficulties, but we will resume shortly. So hang tight, folks. I, for one, was really interested in what was going on. <coughs> I want to know what those grow tips are. Now I can see the YouTube chat, but shout out to everybody in all the other chats, but I can see the YouTube chat. So shout out to everybody in the YouTube chat saying congratulations. <laughs> Evil Dave, got to change the batteries in those cordless mics. That's funny. <laughs> now I don't know the strain. Oh, let me find out. I'm now smoking on some AOC. I don't know what that stands for, but it's from the folks at Weeds. So, you know, shout out to them. It's tasty. It rolled good. Smoke's good. I think we're going back, though, so, you know. Yeah, we're coming back. It's been real, man. folks. I'll see you later at dab time. Oh, man. I can't even figure out what's going on. Oh, 
Oh, I know. It's so frustrating for me. I... Okay, Andrew? Hey, what's up? Sorry about that. Apparently the uh, uh, signal from here on the grounds went a little wonky for a second. So anyway, uh, the signal, you've retired a little bit from growing. It's a full-time job doing what you're doing now, but you grew, a, you grew a plant or two. Any old school tips and tricks for some friends of mine? You know what? A guy told me years ago when I was doing the indoors, and he taught me how to do everything just perfect. Spray every four days, take care of everything, never eat your dinner or food until you took care of your plants, and just the basic think of anything or do anything without me telling you and I thought I thought he was kind of rude and then after years I used to tell my people the same thing if you get your programs down and you just do it right everybody wants to do all these really special things I have all these people want to add all these different tricks <coughs> and it's like it's just doing the, the right thing every day yeah. and being with your plants and loving them the people that have won the cup year after year after year <coughs> like prayed over their plants when they watered them right. they basically did everything like in a spiritual manner I mean it's all organic first of all for us it's like you're growing organically right. and you're using as much local material as possible because you're really bringing the in the land into that that energy of the ter the terpenes and the cannabinoid profile stuff so for me that's what it really it really starts with and then it's just really doing it the right way I mean I I'm a simple farmer and I'll oh, no, sorry I'm a simple farmer I'll throw my hands around uh, and yet uh, for years I've uh, I've outproduced most of the people uh, just by really you know taking the time just like my kids they're like your children and if you do that right and you know you get your formulas right and you do it all organically uh, you'll end up with a really fine product. You know? Great, great tips from the man who knows about it. I love it, man. Those are some honestly that you can see it when people put love into it, and you can also tell when it's commercially grown by machines and in big bulk batches. Like there's nothing, there's nothing like boutique bud when people really put their love into it. Hey, the, the first winner of the cup was an 86 year old man who had never grown cannabis in his life. His son gave him a purple Kush, and he was a hell of a farmer, and he mm -hmm. beat all those people. And then he left us, let us take the award because he said he's going to be dead soon, which we're lucky we still have the award. He's 86 years old. But that was the first guy. Uh, one of the guys that won the award was a, the same thing, was a real traditional agricultural guy. I tell people, if you love growing pumpkins and corn and growing tomatoes and squash, you're going to be a good cannabis farmer because you love plants in general. A lot of the people in the mountains, they're not really plant people, and that's why they don't grow good bud. I think my uh, my grandpa would have been a phenomenal cannabis Absolutely. grower. Absolutely. He, he used to grow on the farm in Saskatchewan, and then he had, like, the best backyard oh. garden there was in town. Like, he, he turned that dirt into just the most beautiful black gold there was. He would have grown good weed, I think. Absolutely. And I guarantee the person who wins in each category for this event, the 15th Annual Emerald Cup going on Sunday night over there in the big awards ceremony down there, those that person will have put all kinds of love into their product. Absolutely, you can see it uh, every year. I can tell them. And I can tell how much you got, love you guys put in this event, man. I know you've got so much more to do. Tim, thanks for coming by. If you can come by, come check us down here at the Sonoma County Fairgrounds, Saturday and Sunday, the 15th Annual Emerald Cup. Into the show. Same thing, it comes across on the screen, just like that. If you love something, you have passion, it'll be really well received. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. With that, um, uh, four questions before he goes, Andrew. Can we can we make that happen? Or stickless. The red tile. Okay. The intro is playing. Okay. Nah, 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 nah. Going okay? Looking good? All we right. get it. Four questions. Busy crap. Everybody gets it. I can't let the man go. This truck's driving by and shit like that. If you hear all sorts of beeping and loud, and we're putting outdoors. I mean, yeah, they're putting a show on. In San Still in the three years that I've been coming here. Uh, but with that, four questions. Okay, Tim Blake. Uh, where did this all begin for you? Not as this event, but your journey. When did you start smoking weed? How did you get into cannabis? When did you start dating Mary Jane? I was 14 years old. A friend of mine brought some, uh, some cannabis to school, and I was a hyperactive kid, and it saved my life. Uh, I probably would have been put on Ritalin or something just because I was so hyperactive. It completely brought peace to me. I knew it was my mission. I started dealing about three months later, and I never quit. So. 
Okay. Uh, and your preferred method of consumption? Do you like uh, joints or, or dabs or blunts or edibles? or what, What's your preferred at this point? I love joints. I'm an old 10-a-day 10, 10 joint guy. Uh, I can't do it anymore. I really got to do mostly vaporizers uh, because, you know, I don't care how good it is, it'll, it'll ruin your lungs. But uh, I do love a good dab, though, too. And, and a good cartridge with distillate. I'll take it anyway, except the edibles. I'm not really good with edibles because I like it too much and then I get too high. Uh, question number three, out of uh, how much do you consume? Are you like a kind of a once in a while or a bit? You just sort of answered every day, all day, 10 joints a day kind of guy? I used to be. I meditate and pray every day. I usually don't smoke until the afternoons after I do my meditations, and then I smoke pretty good until the evenings. And when you look back at your career, out of all the weed that's come across your desk, and I, I thought I seen a lot of weed, but if you've seen 15 years of cup weed along the way as well too, there has to be out of everything from all the weed you've grown, all the weed you've seen, the Emerald Triangle, your legendary career, blah 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 blah. blah there has to be one bag that stands out as the most memorable bag of all time, the best bag you've ever seen, and if you only saw it once and it got away, it's the one that got away. What's yours? It would be the original uh, Big Sur Holy Weed that they brought in about 1985. Uh, it was called the, uh, the Grease, the Chronic. Uh, it, had, it had names. Everybody knew it back then. It was the first super pot. It was the first pot that actually was like an OG before anybody had seen an OG, and it was so so greasy uh, I think it was even it would compete with anything today it's like going back Michael Jordan Wilt, Wilt Chamberlain or whatever else but I think that would compete with anything today and second would be the uh, one phenotype of the PK they brought in the pure mm. kush that I, I really liked it was uh, very hard to find and we lost it it won the cup uh, about uh, 10 years ago but I haven't seen it in a while well we'll see who wins the cup this weekend man. Yeah. Tim once again thank you very much for being here make sure you're here either this yeah. year next year anytime you get a chance to come here here come to the Emerald Cup man in December it's a great time man don't worry about the weather hey it could be worse you could be in Canada digging on the snow that's for damn sure we're gonna be at 420 with you guys in Canada. yeah please, please 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 come up. Taylor you guys have to come up and join us we're gonna take a quick little break Andrew why don't you play the planned commercials and then uh, we'll see if we need more time other than that we'll be right back thanks very much guys appreciate you watching Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, the Big Puffer, back once again. Due to technical difficulties, I'll be chilling with you guys for the next, I don't know, to be determined amount of time. Smoking this delicious weed from the folks at Weeds. How's everybody doing today? Uh, Emerald Cup sounded really cool, though. I was I was really interested in those weeds that he was saying that uh, the bag that got away. What do you say? The 
the, 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 the pure Kush, and then what was the one before? But it sounded really, it sounded really fire. And he was saying that it was greasy. That's an interesting word. A really greasy. Does that mean like a uh, lot, lot of a like you know, stick, yeah, okay, greasy. I like that. Usually, greasy is not a, a word you associate with anything positive. It's, like, it's not really good to be greasy, you know. But greasy weed. I'm all here for some greasy weed. Yo, just a reminder too. Tune in Tuesdays 4 p.m. to catch my show on Pot TV, the Pot TV YouTube and a Cannabis Culture Facebook page. You know, shout out to Big Lock. Every episode is just really dope. I think next week's episode is going to be episode 43. So, uh, yeah, man, you guys got to tune in. And once again, check out my projects, Low-Key Mary Jane 2 and G-Town Lover. They're out now everywhere where you can stream music. You know, you know, I had to come do the little plugs, you know. Use my, use my, my uh, screen time wisely. Yo, shout out to Two Joints. I see you. Don't mask the truth. Matthew Silva. Seldom seen. Evil Dave. Shout out to all of y'all. Love y'all in the chat. And everybody else in all the other chats, because there's a lot of chats, but I can't see them all right now. So, love to all of y'all. I think they'll be returning shortly to the Emerald Cup, but... Do y'all like my, my, my uh, bucket hat? It's got marijuana leaves on it. I know you can't really see it from here, but it's got marijuana leaves on it. I thought it was really festive. You know what I mean? Marijuana leaves. I think I need a wardrobe budget so I can get more uh, weed-inspired clothing to wear on air. Yeah? How you feel like about some dab time? Ha! I'm ready for dab time. What is dab time already? Shit, right. Well, you're in charge today, so dab time is whenever you say it's dab time. Well, if if that's the case, then I think you should just run it and let's just do dab time then. Yeah, let's do it. Ha! What's up, folks? Welcome to Dab Time. Um, no Craig here today, so it's just me, you know? And uh, I thought, hey, if it's just me gonna be here, you know, I'd just be like plugging all my albums and stuff. I thought, why don't I just play one of my songs? So this song is called Mary Mary, and it's off of my EP that I released in November called Low Key Mary Jane 2. Six songs, beautifully inspired by my love of cannabis and uh, I'm gonna be dabbing some glacier gold shatter so yeah uh, I'm ready whenever you are to play Mary Mary get that off of low-key Mary Jane too yeah. Since I took a puff, I can't get enough You see right through the smoke and call all my bluffs When I had a long day and my mind stressing You the one, God's gift, give me good blessing Keep me sane, keep me calm, keep me going strong <coughs> Help me realize when your boy in the wrong 
Help me understand all the truths and the lies. Help me reach cloud nine from the stormy skies. No Rick Ross, baby, this deeper than rap. I'm high all the time, 50 cent, get me the strap. I spent 50 bucks on you, you took me to Mars. It wasn't Hollywood, but you was real tight with the stars. Out in Hollywood, you was outside with the crew. Riverdale, George Road, GP, how we do? I like it when you back it up and we go to the woods. I like it when I open you up and you give me the goods. Mary, Mary, you know you're my mind. Back. Mary, Shadow. Mary, Stubborn. you're one of a kind. Uh -huh. Mary. That's Mary Mary from my new project, Low Key Mary Jane 2. Go get that. And follow me on Instagram, Lord Geezy. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. And we're back to Craig X in the Emerald Cup in one minute. Now, so we're still here. Yeah, go check that out. Go we're to out in the, well, in the, the parking lot kind of it looks like right now, but it's actually not the parking lot. This no. is actually what will be the main drag of, of vendor tents and markets and areas and, and foods over there and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, am I good to keep going, Andrew, as I've been going here? Yeah, I'm good. I don't know. I'm getting too many things in the ears. What, what am I doing? What am I doing? Are am we I here? Yeah, What's my know. name? Yeah. In, out, in, 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 I don't know. I don't know if I'm on. Am I not on? Am I on? Am I on? Oh yeah, I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, hey, Taylor Blake's with me though. That's all that matters is what's going on. This is so crazy right now because I got the call going in my ear and it's through Todd's phone. Y'all have no idea how, how awesome this is. Kind of the weird. But with me, it is awesome to once again have with me here on the show and seeing you once again in your backyard. The one yeah. only Taylor Blake. Yeah. Hi. Hi. How are, <laughs> How are you? Newly married since we were last down here. Yeah. Congratulations Thank on that. Thank you very much. That's right. In Vegas. Yeah. We, we never we always we, run into each other yeah. in different places. Uh, yeah. It's, it's very interesting. We're, we're on the circuit, as mm -hmm. they like mm -hmm. to call it, mm -hmm. where like, I feel like the only places that I see you are at cannabis events right. now. But it's cool. Like, it's I nice. Need, I need to see you in April in Vancouver. <laughs> it's not no. really optional at this point. I know. Okay? No, like, okay. Three times How about this? We'll shake on it. <laughs> Confirmed. I'll take really good care of you guys. Okay, cool. Please. Good. Uh, you're taking fantastic care of me, <laughs> and you're getting ready to take care of 30-some thousand people this weekend, yes? Yeah. I mean, it's uh, like a little shindig, but just, yeah. Just like, you, know, you, know, you know, of course, this is, you've grown up with this. Mm -hmm. This was when you started when you was just a little whippersnapper. Yeah. And now you're here running the thing with your dad, one of the most successful cannabis events in the world. Yeah. Uh, my favorite two-day event that there is here and setting up to be bigger and badder than ever. What are, what, what are we looking at sort of in the background and as we try and... Maybe walk this way. Rusty, come on. You're gonna shimmy with us? Yeah, we're gonna shimmy slightly. This can be really awkward, people. Okay. We're sorry. But, and then we're gonna like walk backwards, like in right, looking. Right? So as okay, we're mostly seeing trucks right now. But as we clear this, okay. so there's tents and vendors of various different markets and stuff. Uh, produce. What, what are we looking at over these places? Yeah, yeah. So we have like a lot. But the biggest. Okay. TV. Right? It's a test. He has a steady cam for this. <laughs> the unit. So, so basically, what do you got? Like 300 some different exhibitors down here. Yep. So we have like a. Cool. They're all connected. So that way, in case it does happen to. They're mostly construction areas and stuff like that. But it. The edible. Um, no, they're all interspersed. Oh, it's yeah. just all kind of very. All yeah. Sponsors, like they each have like their own. So that's like the biggest difference. Uh, down. down the way. Well, we don't have to just turn at least anyway. <laughs> yeah. And then you can see. 
Uh, it's very Cirque du Soleil. The cookies. <laughs> cookies like they're all down there the, you got so many sponsors everybody <laughs> I'm back What's up? A little bit of te technical difficulty, so I'm back. Still smoking on Joint 70, but you know, we here chilling in Studio 710. Yo, big shout out. I'm actually glad we got to come back. Big shout out to Anthony J, Two Joints, Raymond Kowal. Yo, much love, much love and respect, y'all. Thank you for the kind words about the song. Um, yeah. Video of the Year candidate is right. I think I might make a video for this song, you know? And I'm, 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 I'm working on some more cannabis-related music, actually. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to really make some, you know, because cannabis, you know, I smoke, any, every time I'm at home and I smoke weed, at the end, I always end up writing music. So weed is like my biggest inspiration, you know, so. I could write sober. I've done it before. But it's just a lot more fun to write after smoking a joint or a blunt. Or even hitting the bong one time or doing some dabs. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to make some more weed inspired music, and I hope you guys will stay tuned and enjoy. Because obviously, you guys are feeling the weed tunes as long as they're, you know, as long as they're hype, as long as they're good. So, I'm, you know, I'm going to work hard on some, some fly weed tunes. Yeah, yo, I should put Big Lock in the video, for sure. He he is briefly in the clouds video, but it's like briefly, briefly. I want to actually just shoot a video at the Cannabis Culture Lounge. That would be pretty cool, and just you know, just smoking a bunch of weed, have some trippy effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Who knows? Who knows? Well, this joint's done. I guess the only thing left to do is spark another one. Um, can we uh, get that joint counter? This will be joint 71, I believe. Yep. Look at me run those joint numbers up. What's everybody smoking, yo? People in the YouTube chat, because I can see what you're saying. I can't see what anyone else is saying, but I love all y'all in the chat anyways. You guys know you're like my favorite part about doing any of the shows is the chat. You guys are so cool. Super cool. No, nobody, nobody. Don't tell me what y'all what, 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 what smoking on. All good. I'm smoking on this dope weed from Weeds. Um, I don't know what the strain is because it was an abbreviation. But uh, ooh, we got the studio looking kind of smoky up in here. Hey, Papa. I guess so Craig uh, and Taylor are on their way to the cookie tent, so we're just gonna run this video and earlier from last I ate year. Some of those. Uh, I ate two packs of these, the CBD ones, because I know if I ate the THC ones. Okay, I think we're going back, yo. Thanks for chilling with me, yo. So we're actually just going to go quickly check on uh, a video from last year. Uh, they're on their way to the cookie tent right now. So, so they're on their way to the cookie tent, and we're going to check out a video. And yeah, maybe I might even eat one more of these. I don't know. Oh, boy, I'm high. <laughs> no, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. We back. And I did want to eat some of the cookies, 
the weeds cookies, but he told me not to. But he did say to have some of these products by sec. These new CBD strawberry feels, 25 milligram. Mm, delicious. Let's try. Da, da, da. Products by sec. Strawberry feels. Oh, they're shaped like strawberries, too. Smell pretty good. Mmm. Mmm. Actually, pretty good. Mmm. Products by sec. You make a good. You make a good edible, I got to say. Mmm. 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 Shout out to CBC voter, John Fan. Join the chat. Ooh. It's good. You know I need that CBD to like counteract all the THC. Cause you know, been smoking. We good? We got the video? Okay, we go into the video. Check this out. Hey, what's up? It's me, Craig X, here at the Emerald Cup 2017 with the big man himself. It's Burner in the place to be. What's going on, fam? Man, we just chilling, enjoying this. It's the launch of cookies as a, you know, as a, as a product. You know, we got a bunch of new products we're launching. This is the first time we've actually been in a booth with, uh, with you know, herb products ourselves. Me and Jai, it's a, it's, it's a legendary experience right now. No, man, this is a big moment, Jai, over there. You guys and the creators of the cookies in the place to be. And Emerald Cup 2017, doing it bigger and better than ever. And you guys coming harder than ever. Let's face it, man. I mean, you guys are murdering the game right now. We dropped some uh, new varieties. We dropped Lemoncello. Uh, it's one of our finos, uh, Lemoncello number nine. We dropped that here today. We dropped um, we dropped some Snowman. We never dropped that publicly. The London Pound Cake extracts we dropped. Also some, uh, some uh, greenhouse varieties as well. Shit's amazing. You know, I was about to drop that new album, Big, the the Big Pescado, let me say it right. The Big Pescado means the big fish. It drops on um, January 16th, uh, 2018, and it's produced fully by Scott Storch. This shit is next level. In my opinion, it's it's the next level of my music career. I'm going to have to take it there. Uh, and with all kind of features on, you're going to have to tune in and see who who's on the album, but I've heard it's a lot of great people coming together to make this album happen. I'll give you all a couple. I got the game on there. I got Pusha T. I got E-40, Too Short, Trey Songs, uh, Wiz Khalifa, I got Ty Dolla Sign, T-Fly, there's a lot of motherfuckers on the album, man. And we even got your weedy looking face on the album cover too, man. Yeah, man, the album cover's dope too. Um, okay. Met somebody online that came out to the uh, to LA, the studio made my face out of Lemoncello, and that was the album cover, so. You can make a weed expert choice anytime, bro, just saying. Uh, if you want to get some cookies, of course, you can get that in finer retailers around the, the state. If, if you're watching and you got a retail store, you want to know where to find it, you can always go to Weed Maps brand section to let you know where we're located. As well, if you you know you got a store and you want to cop something, if you follow me on IG, the, uh, the link will be up soon. That's Burner415 on IG. And the best way to stay up on you and the music and the album is the Instagram or is there websites we need to check to? I just stay on Instagram. That's my that's my life diary right there. If I'm going through some shit, I'm dropping some shit or something new, you're going to find it right there for sure. Oh, I love that Maybach you were dropping on there. But something I asked on Instagram, because I saw, at one point I thought I saw a point that, uh, post that said this might be like your last album. Is that is there any truth to that? I'm not trying to like investigate a journalism on you, but. Well, at the end of the day, we only get one life. You know what I'm saying? We live once. You gotta enjoy your time, and I'm not saying that I don't enjoy making music, but I spend a lot of time doing it. I put a lot of uh, a lot of energy being on the road and whatnot, but uh, nah, fuck nah, this ain't the last album. My motherfuckers need to chill for a minute, so after I drop this, I'll probably go to Hawaii for two weeks, personal chef it out, and I'll be back. My man, Burner, staying busy. Burner415 on Instagram. Get you some cookies, man, and get the big Moscato coming in January. I'm Craig X, Emerald Cup 2017.
crazy. Burner. I fuss with Burner. I fuss with Burner. Oddly enough, though, I have never heard The Big Piscato yet. Actually, that's a lie. That's a lie. I heard a few songs off The Big Piscato, but I haven't heard it in its entirety. But it'd be pretty dope to meet Burner one day. Shout out to Burner and the folks who make cookies and stuff, you know? Shout out to them. Um, we're going to see if we can get you guys to uh, back to Craig X. Um, they're going to go to the cookies tent, and we're going to see if we can, you know? But until then, you know, you're stuck with me in my weed bucket hat. You know, I'm just chilling. I, uh, before that, I just ingested some of these strawberry fields, new CBDs, you know? So, uh, that's my third pack. I'm feeling real nice. It's like I'm on a cloud right now, you know? It's a good feeling. How's everybody feeling in the chat? How's everybody doing? Much love to y'all. Much love to everybody watching, even afterwards, who is not in the chat, which is everybody watching. Big shouts out to you. And big shouts out to, you know, Expert Joints, you know, and High Times TV. That's a, that was a really cool announcement. I'm really excited for that. Don't get to see uh, everyone on High Times TV. We'll get to see uh, the Big Beans video. Me and Big Lock. Pardon? Now, see, there's the thing. We did, with my music video that I shot yesterday, it was like all raining and stuff, but we had, yesterday, yesterday was apparently the best day of the week for weather, in terms of weather, and it was still raining. So like, ah, oh, and today's even worse. Like, I hate the rain. I don't even know, I always try to think to myself, this is, this is high guy thoughts right now, because I'm like, but I was think I try to think like what 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 season is my favorite season? Cause me I'm one of those people who I just complain every season. Like in the summertime it's way too hot. In the in the fall and the winter time it's way too cold. No, it's too it's too cold and rainy in the in the in the fall time. It's way too cold in the winter time and I hate the snow. Springtime. It's also pretty rainy, and there's still like a little snow left on the ground sometimes. So spring, and then and then I, I get allergies too. So then all the, 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 the stuff gets, you know, everything starts springing up, and then stuff like my allergies start acting up. So there's not really a, a season that I even really like. I guess I guess spring would probably be my least hated season. Because the weather is like, you know, it's starting to get better. It's not as rainy all the time. But it's not too hot. Like, I like, don't get me wrong. I would love summer. But sometimes it just gets way too hot. And you can't, like, at least when it's cold, you can bundle up. But when it's too hot, like, let me put it this way. I don't like sweating for no reason. If it's hot enough that I'm just sweating for no reason, just being outside or just being around, it's too hot. I don't like that. I need. I like it when it's like if the sun is out, the sun is shining, but there's a nice, gentle breeze. You know what I mean? Just a nice, gentle, cool breeze so you know the sun is And then there's clouds. There's got to be some clouds in the sky. You know what I mean? I'm not just talking about weed clouds. I'm talking about actual clouds so that occasionally the sun gets blocked out a little bit. It can't just be, I hate it when it's really hot and the sun is out and there's no clouds in the sky. That's the worst. That is the worst. The worst. But yeah, those are just some things that I think about sometimes, you know, when I'm high. Okay. I think we, we may be going to, uh, yeah. Hey, that story had a, that story ended perfectly. That was a good like a good little rant, and it ended at the right time because I think we go into the to Craig and the cookies tent. Wait, wait, what? 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 We going? Oh no, or are we still here? Oh, we still here. Okay, cool. Not only was the construction noise still a little bit loud and the lighting a little bit weird, but uh, the <laughs> the uh, the also the Wi-Fi kind of shit the bed a little bit over there and we ran out of a little bit of power. 
So we're back here where we started, plus where we have plugins, and slightly oddly enough, a little bit better reception. Also, apologize for any of the audio in and outness throughout of it all. You know how it is when we're live on the grounds. We're, we're, we're doing what we can. Thanks to Russ. Now, come on down here, be a part of it. But before we let you get car crash up, um, who's performing here this weekend? The big speakers and. and and stuff. Yeah, so we have here, which is are um, one of them's Rick Doblin, yeah. who is uh, the founder of MAPS, the multidisciplinary association of psychedelics in college. Um, he's always been a huge like like role model of mine so it's really amazing it's his first year ever attending we've had maps actually participate with their art before but never have him um actually come speak so cool. yeah he's like he's he's pretty cool right. um so him and then uh, dr ethan russo he's done like a ton of That's amazing research yeah he's like a great um researcher he's super intelligent and he's a great uh speaker and so he's gonna be here too about jay and silent bob it's Willie yeah. Nelson yeah. is well going to be in the place as well, yeah, too. Totally. And, and some big acts as well, too. Some big bands playing as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So we actually have a really eclectic lineup. We have um, Margot Price. She's amazing. She just got nominated for a Grammy. Um, we have Protégé. We have Gogo Bordello. We have Big Gigantic. We have STS. Some of our headliners, we have the whole time we'll have music going. So, yeah. It's going to be a fantastic event. Mm -hmm. Obviously, and a few tickets still available at the EmeraldCup.com or yeah. here at the door. Yep. Or, uh, what's, uh, They'll be available through tomorrow and then on Saturday starting at the door, but until we sell out. Yeah. Uh, brilliant. Uh, prices? That's a great know? question, Craig. Oh, on the website, Thank you'll be able you. to find that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I've monopolized all the time that I probably can out of you. <laughs> then, you know, bit of a fucking fiasco slash actually kind of actually pulled off bits and pieces of it. Yay for appreciate the team. Damn you We're for Teradex for kind of being in and out a little bit, but you kind of worked, but you didn't, but it's better than an iPhone. But <laughs> thank you for holding it down in the booth as well, too. Appreciate that. Uh, we're going to be filming the montage for the weekend, and that will air on an upcoming episode of Expert Joints uh, Live, an episode there. You'll also see it on Expert Joints, uh, the out and about with Craig X over there on the High Times TV as well. About Is anything we've missed that we haven't? Do, do, great. <laughs> do, do we need to do, did you do the favorite four? When we... I'm already, like, already yeah, I already and... did it, yeah. Okay. Okay, so really, I guess other than like we're done here, we're pretty much done. <laughs> I guess the only thing we could really probably do, you did dab time back in the booth there, so so we got most of it in. Let's do this. Let me say, make sure you watch the rest of the Pod TV shows on Friday with Jeremiah Vandermeer, four o'clock, Canvas Culture News. On Saturday, you got High Noon with Boss Lissa and Miles, old man Miles there, uh, hobbles. I hope he's feeling better by now. Jesus, come on, man, the slowest healing angle next to Kay Hamilton's ever. Um, oh, E.C. Budgal and Carly Mar Man, the big puffa and big lock holding it down there with the puffa podcast. Over there. I'll be back, of course, next Thursday, 4.20 for episode 157. It'll be like the Xmas special. There We're going to do that. So uh, basically one big puff puff pass it along all episodes. So sorry, uh, boss, but you're going to get a few uh, receipts for Canada Post bills for this one but it's not that it's, it won't be that bad it won't be that bad it's cheaper than catering it's cheaper than catering come to I'm not here no i'm not there in the booth on savon i'm here finish with the shtick and you know try and find people who are setting up and stuff because there'll be like some vendors on site tomorrow Come down with the camera crew, maybe start filming some of it, seeing who's got the good weed and shit like that, getting some little testers, you know, and then... Big Puff is going to go by there, play some music, so...
put some of that on the Instagrams, on Cannabis Life Network. I might go live on the Facebooks, on Cannabis Culture at some point. You never know. And, of course, you'll see all the replay of, like I said, all of this, not only this shit, as well too so that's pretty cool check that check the app those are those checks 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 all of those things i guess the recap video of 2017 so why don't you play that and then go right to the outro how's that okay well then with that thank you very much and please hit It's me, Craig Axe. We're here for day one of the 2017 Emerald Cup down here, Sonoma County Fairgrounds. I am down here with Cannabis Life Network, expert joints. We're working with Skunk Magazine, Highway Magazine. Let's head on inside. Check it out. Just getting started with day one. We're having a great time. We're down at the registration booths here. And if you want your 215 compliance bracelet, which here in California, you gotta have so that you can go in and enjoy all the festivities, all the cannabis. So with my man Neil here from Meadow, what's going on? Just here verifying your recommendation here to expedite the process. Very nice. The boys from Meadow, no! no. What up, everyone? We've got my man Lazy. We got my man Oli. What up, y'all? And we got the Soil King. You guys have some products of your own in said Emerald Cup. We have three entries this year. We're doing a flower entry again. We're doing a bubble entry and a rosin entry. From one room to another, they just keep coming with the booths and the booths and the booths. There's shit everywhere here at the Emerald Cup 2017. We're gonna go check out one more area that's full of weed. It's the man, DJ Blue Blaze. What's going on, homie? Good, you know, just out here doing some seed uh, archiving to bring back to Canada. What do you think in comparison to other festivals? It reminds me of a music festival, but it's like uh, Karma Cup on steroids. Sarah Sunday in the place. What's going on, girlfriend? Oh, just taking in the majesty of this amazing event. Like, my hat is off to the Emerald Cup organizers. This is an insane amount of work. It's a really well done event. This must be what Tim McBride feels like. All aboard. Hey, it's Craig X. I'm here with a bunch of ladies. It says they're runts, but they're definitely ladies. But tell us, what is runts? So runts is a new strain. It's gelato crossed with Skittles. What's going on, boss? Not much. We're here slanging seeds, having a good time, enjoying the festivities. I mean, it's a place to be right now. Charlie Tuna. What's going on, Doc? Ah, uh, man, I'm coming up here and uh, indulging. I really wanted to learn a lot more about the culture itself. It's cool to be able to see something like this be not only embraced, but really embraced from a perspective of medicine as well. We're at the Sonoma County Fairgrounds, and we're in the Dragonfly Earth Medicine. They've uh, got a, literally a wood frame, canvas covered teepee out here. We really don't believe in the USDA standards of organic. We re it really doesn't represent our farm. So a long time ago, we decided, why don't we create a certification that represents our farm? So we created the Pure Certification, which is a community-driven certification that is drawing people together that are like-minded. Real organics instead of organish. We're here at the Canna Craft Village. This is where you're going to get all kinds of seeds and quality genetics. They got all kinds of great flowers in here. We've seen some familiar faces in here. I think I even saw a burner up in here. We got, uh, got a lot going on in this room, so let's go check it out. It's burner in the place to be. That new album about to drop. The Big Pescado, let me say it right. The Big Pescado means the big fish. It drops on um, 
It's January 16, uh, 2018, and it's produced fully by Scott Storch. This shit is next level. Canna Craft Village down at the 2017 Emerald Cup with a good friend of mine, James, is here. Give him the rundown, seedsherenow.com. We're basically essentially brokers for breeders. So we work with 42 breeders, uh, what I consider 42 the top U.S. breeders only. That's solid. That's solid, man. It's my man Stingy, famous for the Stingy OG. What's going on, Doc? How are you doing? We out here in the Emerald Cup, Santa Rosa. You know, I was here two years ago. We skipped last year. It's crazy how much this festival has evolved. Everyone has stepped their boots up. It looks very professional. Proud of this. So, Brandon, you were telling us about this crazy, delicious, delicious, super secret sauce, man. What's going on with this? Uh, it's a solventless form of sauce. So, solventless sauce, it's a super special thing. You know, you actually have the separation of terps and you have the THCA crystalline. So, the chunks are the pure THC and then the liquid is uh, more of the terps. When Charlo's around, whatever else I'm doing, I just say, fuck it, drop it, and run over and go see Charlo. Glad you're here to join me on this luxurious boat in Paradiso. It's very nice. Uh, for those unfamiliar, uh, Paradiso is a new brand that's in the process of just being unveiled or yeah. launching this weekend. You're here at the launch. You know, all of the stocks have been pulled out. Paradiso, it's a craft cannabis brand that you're going to see all across the state of California. Give them a quick rundown why you're here. I'm Mara Gordon, the founder of Aunt Zelda's, and we are a biomedical, biopharmaceutical company utilizing cannabis to treat serious diseases. If you're behind it and you really need help, help, get a hold of Mara Gordon, man. She'll do her best to take care of you. I'm with my man and his lady, the king and queen of soil, if you will. It's Patrick and Jamie. What's going on, y'all? Oh, man, this show is off the hook. I got my beautiful queen with me today, and we are going after cannabis licensing and different things, and she is a rock star. And you're here for the community in your area. I mean, of course, those who know, know you were big supporters of the uh, fire relief funds. Raising $50,000 that you helped distribute uh, amongst the fire relief victims who desperately needed it. Immediately taking care of the needs on the streets when the fire was going down. There was families that were running out of gas, no clothes, no, sl no sleeping bags, no food. Cannabis culture family came in strong. We were there before, way before FEMA, any government could come in. There was no Red Cross set up anywhere, right? Cannabis culture family hit the streets. We made a statement. We told them what we can do, how we can do it. And we were the first ones there and we are still the last ones that are going to leave. Hey, what up? Craig X here, wandering through the grounds, but I'm going to look to see if we got any live joint rolling. Because if you remember last year on the video, there was some guys who we did a little joint rolling competition with, and um, they've been talking shit on social media. So I kind of think it's time to go back and have a rematch. Oh, so there they are. They thought they could hide. I looked on the map and it said they were in a different booth. And I realized they're trying to hide from me. They scared. They didn't think I was going to come back and get them. But I've come back to defend my title. You've been talking shit all year, brother. You ready for round two? Oh, am I ready? Craig X versus Sunbolt, round two. That's packed, man. That's pretty fast. The entries are in. So let's see how they stand up. Intense battle. Who's going to win? The answer, both of us, because we get to smoke that super NorCal diesel from Sunbowl Grove. What's up, everybody? It's me, Craig X, here at the Emerald Cup 2017 down at the beautiful Sonoma County Fairgrounds with the man of the hour or of the weekend or of this whole event, ladies and gentlemen, Tim Blake. Thank you. Great to be here. Glad that you're here. Glad to meet us here uh, filming all this and bringing it out to everybody across the country and across the uh, world. We wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for you and all of your efforts for a bunch of years, but this is the 14th run of these, is this not? Oh yeah, 14th year, first year we had no media, we were afraid to even put a poster out. Underground, uh, a lot of mass, you know, a completely uh, different show than it is today. You know, 500 vendors, 30,000 people, we got the you know, State Board of Equalization, we got all the you know, congressmen, we got cannabis czars, everybody coming in. What's going on, y'all? Not a whole lot, man, we're just enjoying day two of the Emerald Cup 2017. 
Uh, brought the team out, brought the booth out. We're really excited launching some new products. We got the distillate, the CO2, some dabs, some shatter. So we're just excited to be here. I'm with a man, Sean, from Weed for Warriors. What's going on, brother? Having a wonderful time here at the best event on earth, the Emerald Cup. Man, I love it. And I also love the work that you're doing. The Weed for Warriors project is a very important initiative. Can you tell us a little bit more about it for those unfamiliar? Greg, the Weed for Warriors project is really about, uh, you know, we, through our chapter network, we help bodies. We're helping people uh, through life, whether it's addiction issues, you know, the suicide, the overdose epidemic we have. And on the national level, we're raising awareness. Ooh la la, it's Frenchy Cannoli. Holy shit, I can't believe it. What's going on to the hash master himself? How are you, sir? I'm very well. You'll see. <laughs> oh, I'll be very well in a minute. Here, let me hit this, and then I got a couple questions for you. The only way I can equate call that is a pleasurable experience. Wow, Frenchy. What was that for us? That's a sour tangerine, a clone only, grown on Spyrock. It's a beautiful place with an amazing exposition and people breed their, their own genetic. The 2017 Emerald Cup, oh man, Nat from Madrone. I'm seeing pre-rolls, I see some live resin and all kind of stuff in the back there. Yeah, no, it's stoked to just collaborate with a few different manufacturers and because really we are a flower company and that's what we focus on. So it's nice to have these collaborations and let people that uh, do, do what they do and do it best and then we get to do what we do best. My man, Shabinsky in the place. What's going on, dude? Uh, having a wonderful time out here with these people of Sonoma County, celebrating a nice harvest. This is the best part, man. I mean, we all come out here to show what we have, and you know, we work really hard. Uh, definitely got a good cure going, so. Yes, sir. Uh, the award ceremony is just wrapping up over there at Dipped Out. Uh, you guys put anything in the cup this year? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We're waiting uh, to see what's going on. Uh, we're about to get to the flowers. And nice. So, uh, yeah, we've been, we've been patiently waiting. Yeah. Uh, you uh, are selling raffle tickets to win off a, what, 20 by 30 some booth in here? This has got to be quite the prize. Yeah, we call this our live demo here at the Emerald Cup, and normally we just put this up for a demo, and this year they wanted to do some fundraising for the fire relief victims of uh, the area, and so basically we're taking all the proceeds and donating back to the Emerald Cup Fire Relief Fund. Big Jake from MedVets. What's going on, brother? Man, being blessed, just, you know, making it happen. Boots on the ground ministry, what can I say? We run into at a lot of these events, of course, MedVets. Why don't you give them a rundown of what that uh, program's all about? You know, we do suicide prevention and veteran wellness programs. We're going to do a lot of product education, a lot of community engagement programs. The hostess with the most is the one and only Taylor Blake. How are you, girl? Doing so good. Like, so good. The event is in its twilight at the moment. The 2017 Emerald Cup is about to wrap up. Another phenomenal job by you and the crew. Thank you very much. Thank you. That means everything. I mean, like, everybody's feedback this year has really meant so much because everybody says it's, like, an amazing event. It's always, like, that validation that you want, that you're, like, people had a good time? Perfect. <laughs> well, I sure had a good time. And, you know, I'm an expert on the subject. And that's it for the Emerald Cup 2017. It's been a pleasure being down here. I want to thank Tim and Taylor, the Blakes, for having us. Such an awesome time down here. Shouts to you, Sonoma County. Shouts to you, Santa Rosa. We appreciate you having us here. Great event. World class, absolutely. You want to be here next year for the 2018 edition of the Emerald Cup. You know, I'll be here with Cannabis Life Network. I'm Craig X. We'll see you again soon.